Today I have eight pretty spring decor pieces. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. We're going to start off with some beads, whichever colors you like. I have some paper letters that spell the word spring. You can use stickers or any font you want. Then you're going to take enough of these blocks to put the letters spring on there. And then we have some felt flower pins that came originally from Target. So did those little dry erase blocks. This is my thrifted burlap. I'm going to use some of this. You can use any type of paper on the back if you'd like. And I'm just going to use this lucky sign, flip it over, and use the inside of the back. Simple. We don't even have to paint anything. This is a quick project. So you're either going to cut down your piece of paper to fit into the back, or you can use burlap to put into the back. You could also use fabric if you'd like. So I'm just measuring this to fit in there. You can see my ruler. Um, that metal ruler came from Dollar Tree. I love it. I use it for many, many things. And I'm going to cut and trim it so that it will fit inside of this box. Protect your fingers. My little finger protectors came from Dollar Tree. But it is my understanding that you can get them lots of places. Going to use your hot glue gun and just go around one edge at a time. So it's important that if your fabric is not an exact rectangle to fit the inside that the side that is going to be shown is the side that you want to have a nice flush seam or edge. So I got mine actually a little short so it's not exactly straight on this side but it is on the other side so you know you just have to kind of play around and see which side you want to be the top okay you don't even have to do the ends if you don't want to as long as you get those two sides there we don't want to put any glue in the middle because you'll be able to see the lines and you don't want to see those lines so I couldn't I couldn't take these little pins off easily. I thought maybe I could just pull them off or cut them off, but they didn't work with scissors. So I've got to use my pliers and just cut those off. And then I'm going to arrange them in the box. These are actually like baby shower uh, felt flowers that came from the um, from Target in the little bullseye playground area last year, I think. And I got them at Dirt Cheap this year. I knew I could use them in a spring project that they would be so cute and they I think uh, are very versatile you can do a lot of things with these you just got to think outside the box when you find things that you like other ways that you can use them so I'm just placing these down in any way that looks to me like it would look you know nice makes sense be kind of evenly spaced so that I can see all of the flowers and I'm going to be sure that I can see some of my greenery too So now we're going to move on to putting the letters on these blocks. These are dry erase blocks. Um, like I said before, they came in a, I think a 12 pack or a 10 pack from also Target, but I got them from Dirt Cheap. And uh, they were very inexpensive. I think I got like $10 items for a dollar. So yeah, it was crazy. You're just going to take your glue stick. Um, this is purple until it dries and then it's clear. So you don't have to worry about it being messy. It, it won't show. Go ahead and put some on the back and place them in the center of my blocks. These fit well. Um, these paper letters came from my scrapbook supply that I've had forever. So th they could be 10, 12 years old. They, they've been around for a long time and I'm so glad that I finally, as I was purging all of my um, old scrapbook stuff, there were lots of things that I could keep and repurpose and then not have to spend any money for my crafting. You could probably do Mod Podge or something like that on here if you wanted to. You could also use plain wooden blocks and you could paint them. 
um, if you like the look of the white. Okay, so once we get that on there, I'm just going to dot on some more of that glue to go over the top to hold it down. I'm going to do that on each one of them, just kind of patting it down. If you use stickers, you don't have to do this. I guess it would be an extra step to keep them from peeling up. This worked great for me. Now we're going to place these on the top of the box. And what I thought would be cute is to divide these letters up. A little space in between. So I'm going to use these beads as my spacers. These beads came from Goodwill. I got them at the thrift store in long strings and I just cut them, some of the strings apart, and I'm using those individually in my projects. I love the color. It's like a dusty rose or a mauve color and I think it's fitting for spring. Just going to use some hot glue and make sure that it's enough that when you sit the bead down in there that the glue will go up in the middle where the hole is. That's going to give it a good, a good secure fit. I'm going to do that in the center side of each one so that it looks like they are either chained or strung together. You can do this on the outsides of your letters as well if you'd like. So you see this, how this works and then it looks like they are connected together. Now it's time to start putting our word together. Same thing, make sure some of the glue goes on the inside and you have some around the outside of it and you're just going to start putting those together. I'm using the edge of the box as a guide so that I get those nice and straight and there won't be any gapping or problems when I put them on my uh, on the box. Yeah, excuse my dog. We have a, a neighbor's dog or somebody's dog out there and she is not having it. She's very worried and concerned. Okay, so there you go. You can skip this part if you don't want to use any, you know, spacers. You certainly don't have to use any spacers here. Just holding that there so that it will dry and nothing falls apart. And I want to put this in the center top of the box, of course. One more flower I'm going to add here to this bottom corner. And then since we haven't glued spring on there yet, you can decide at that point, do you want this to be the, you know, do you like the the position of this or does this look better and so I chose to flip it around and I think this looks a little bit better now that we have this one piece we can put it on the box just double checking and triple checking my placement And I'm just going to add some glue. Got to refill that glue, glue gun. Just going to add some little dribbles here and there on the bottom. And then lift it up and carefully place it back down in the area that I chose for it to sit. I'm just taking my little tweezers that came from Dollar Tree in a free pack. And I'm going to pull out the little, the little webs that come from the glue. I could have been a little bit neater with that. And I wouldn't have that mess. There you go. How's that? Easy project. You can find these supplies or something similar to it at Dollar Tree. Certainly you can use uh, my piece as an inspiration piece for you to do a project like this from thrifted supplies or even things you already have at home. We're going to start off with some goodies from Dollar Tree, of course. Here are some roses that I've also used on another project. I'm just going to slide up the greenery and clip those off so they'll be ready for use. I have some lamb's ear pieces. Some of these little rosebuds, which also came from Dollar Tree. I have some of this tube burlap stuff. This little picture came from Dollar Tree. And this is my thrift item. I got it from Goodwill. I paid by the pound, it's probably two pounds. Love this. 
it's got a couple little spots on it that need to be kind of attended to so I'm going to just take my sanding block from Dollar Tree and just gently go over this just to remove a couple of the little I don't know little scuff marks on it and not make those little there's a scratch on the bottom there it's pretty noticeable so just sand it down a little bit and get rid of some of that you can use all kinds of stuff to clean up your ripped items you just read the back and then you can get the right instructions we're going to take the plastic off of this cute little pic this was over there with the frames it's not necessarily Valentine's Day which I think would also make it a good candidate for a spring DIY these are wooden beads on the top so I'm going to kind of get an idea of how I want my items to lay out and then I'm going to take my hot glue I am using Gorilla Glue right now because that's what I have I definitely use cheaper glues and I have used the glue sticks from Dollar Tree and they work fine okay I'm gonna place this a little bit closer to the top than the bottom because I want to have some room for my florals and greenery on the bottom and since it has a kickstand on the back or a stand on the back you could use it as a frame and set it up if you would like but I'm gonna use this as a hanging piece I'm gonna get two pieces of my lamb's ear and just start placing it down with some other greenery that I have here I think that is eucalyptus maybe and I'm just gonna start hot gluing that down on on this little plank sign and have to hold it a minute or lay something across it so that it sticks down nicely to the frame I'm not going to do any fast motion in this video so you can kind of get a better idea of how long it takes me to do things use your finger protectors you can use a rubber spatula also there's a makeup spatula I think it's called uh, in the makeup section of Dollar Tree that a lot of people are using but I haven't found any at my trees yet, at my Dollar Trees yet okay I've just traded that pick out for one that's a little bit closer to the size of the one on the other side to make it more symmetrical I'm gonna put some glue down there hold it for a moment then I'm going to use my pliers over there to help hold it in place until it dries down I'm gonna start figuring out how I want my pieces to go adding them down to the glue while it is still wet careful with your fingers and to help them stay in place once I get them where I want them I'm gonna add a little more glue across the top and a little piece of just some scrap paper that I have over there make it like uh, kind of like a bandage it's going to give it some more support and something to hold on to and it'll stay there and be kind of camouflage in the back once we get all of our flowers down you can use pieces of box top box tops you can use pieces of um, the packaging material that your items come out of that you get from Dollar Tree you know the little top paper section that's got the labels turn them inside out you can use those whatever you need to use for that an old envelope whatever all right I'm just going to start adding my roses here too just trying to bend the head of the rose a little bit and then slide the stick part underneath the paper that we put there to make it stick in that glue and I'm going to add some more greenery on the bottom because like I said this is going to be hanging now if you wanted this sign to be something that would sit up you wouldn't want to put all this on the bottom because it would get in the way but we're going to have ours hanging remember with greenery there are wires 
certain pieces in there that you can move around, you can clip it off, you can get the right size that you like, just by trimming up the pieces. Now I'm going to take the little rosebuds and add those in. I'm just going to tuck them around on the right middle side because I want to need a little bit of room on the left side for a bow. This tubing I got at fall, I just had it wound around an old spool that I had, a ribbon spool, uh, to keep it from getting dented, but it's hollow in the center and it looks like burlap. It actually feels kind of like jute or burlap, but it's hollow all the way down like a straw. It's really neat. Just going to make a shoelace bow. You can stop here if this is something you wanted something simple, but I'm going to add a little bit of layering, put a little more dimension in it. Fluff it up a bit. So I'm going to make this bow a little smaller than the one that I first made, and then I'm gonna make one even smaller than that to go right on top. So we have a three layer bow. I'm sure there's probably an easier way to do this, but for me, this worked just fine. You can do any kind of bow you wanna do. Use your bow maker and make something fancier, but for a little rustic romantic look. I think this is very fitting. Just going to take a piece of jute and tie those three sections together right around the middle. Okay, so you see if I put it there like that, it's going to kind of sink down into my arrangement. So I'm going to do something that is going to make it stand out just a little bit. So I need something to do that. I'm gonna take one of these little blocks, little wooden block pieces that I got from the crafting section of Dollar Tree. And that's gonna hold it up away from the, the uh, surface underneath. Again, dimension. I've said that word several times already, but I really do wanna give it some life. I don't want anything flat. You need something for your eyes to dance over. You want your eyes to dance. Happy little eyes, joyful little heart. Okay, so now I am trimming off just to make these the length that I like. Get them all even or stagger them, whichever way you want to do it. You can maneuver this just a little bit, um, but not a whole lot. And you see, I need to hold that down just a little bit longer until it is stuck down. Probably should have moved that greenery out of the way and put it right down on the base, but I didn't do it in this video. You do whatever works for you. So this is kind of what we're looking at. I think this is gorgeous. Definitely something high-end looking that you could get easily at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, but you would pay so much more than I paid for this. I'm going to make another little shoelace bow to go on the top and use a piece of jute to tie it right in the center of my beaded hanger. The only thing I bought for this that was different than something I already had at home was the little Hello Love sign that came from Dollar Tree because I've had the thrifty piece and the florals and the jute and the glue, everything for a while. So not bad for that price. Not bad at all. Then of course I would hang it on the wall right where that little bow is. Right there. What do you think about this? I'm loving the the light colors. Definitely loving the peachier colors of pink this year. And I think it's pretty. It's going to be cute. So cute for springtime too. This was a magnet that I had at Dollar Tree and I pulled the backing off. We're going to take some little clips of whatever you have. You can get some greenery from the Dollar Tree. You can get your greenery from the thrift store. 
or from your stash. Here's the tag for that little dome window. Remove your plastic. And you can pretty easily pop off that little cardboard piece in the middle. Save it. You could use it for another project. And remove the glue that is stuck down on this frame. If you don't, the project will not sit flat down. So you're going to use some type of a plier or a scraper and get that off. These bull nose pliers of mine are one of my favorite crafting tools and it makes short work out of that. Dollar Tree has lots of really nice magnets that you can choose from with really pretty sayings and pictures on them. I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue here. I'm using the Gorilla Glue Sticks at this time and my glue gun. Just put enough on there to adhere this magnet piece down. This is actually like a ceramic or something like that, the material for this little magnet. Press it down so it's got good coverage there on the back. Now you're going to decide what type of greenery you want to put on the bottom of your window. I like the idea of almost pretending that this is a window that looks out over a garden and has a little window box outside. So I just used a piece of this eucalyptus leftover. I'm just winding the wires together there to give us a base for what we're going to put at the bottom of this frame. You can choose whatever shape you want there. If you want to make it more of a straight line, you can, or you can bend it up, curve it. Let you see kind of what I was thinking when I did this project, what I thought might look good together. Just doing a little dry run like I like to do before I put any glue down and make it permanent. So I know I want it to be somewhat like that. And I'm going to take this little pick. You can get similar ones at Dollar Tree. This happens to be one that came from the Dollar Spot in Target originally. I got mine at Dirt Cheap. Just pull those little pieces off of there. And I'm going to use a little bit of wire. Or a little piece of pipe cleaner or a little piece of jute to wrap around here and give it a lot of strength in the middle. That's got the ends of all those pieces in there so it doesn't jar loose or fall apart on you. It also gives a nice little area for the glue. Sometimes little plastic pieces will melt with hot glue and if you wrap it up like this it'll stay right where you put it. Just add a little dab of glue there to put my end down of the little jute piece. And then I'm going to add some glue. Hold that down and use one of your clamps. This is a laundry clamp from Dollar Tree to hold that in place. While that's drying, we're going to move on to the almost like little buds or berries that came off of that piece that I showed you earlier. I just picked them off and I'm just going to start adding those in there. Add some flat if you would like, but be sure that you give it some interest and some dimension by putting some of those at an angle and maybe layering them on top of the greenery that you have underneath. This will make it a little bit fuller and give it that high-end look that you're trying to achieve. So once your glue is dry, you can take your clamp off and you can start working in that area. It shows you just about how long I actually hold it in place before I move on. Rather than speeding it up, I wanted to show you the amount of time that I take to hold it still while the glue sets up. Protect your fingers. Didn't have mine on it this time. Remember when you get these greenery pieces that they can easily be clipped apart or cut apart with scissors. Regular plastic only takes the scissors to cut off and if it's something that's wired just be sure to use some pliers so you don't damage your scissors. And you can cut those into little pieces and bits to use wherever you choose. I always look at my projects on every angle to see what I like, so that's what I was doing there. 
I'm going to take some of this cotton cord that came from Dollar Tree as well. And I'm going to wrap it around my hand several times. I'm going to make a bow with this. You could certainly put a tassel on here instead if you would like. That would probably be cute. But this is just a really simple bow that I'm showing you. And I take your little piece, another piece of that cord, put it right in the middle of all those loops, and then tie it tightly in the center. You're actually going to want to put like a double knot or three knots in there to keep it from coming apart. Trim off the ends at a length that you like. I didn't want mine to be too long, but I did want it to extend the length of my project, so a little bit of those tails hanging down does that. It makes it look a little bit larger, brings your eye down. And then we're going to work on the top part. I want to move that greenery up. And the greenery does happen to match what we have in the little magnet piece that I'm using. So that's convenient. I'm going to take just a little bit of glue and put that down up here on the top. Then I'm going to add a little more glue here and start laying down these little berry or bud pieces. This was from the same little picks that we used on the bottom and I just clipped it apart. You can do the same thing to make the parts fit where you want them to fit. And there you have it. Thank you for a full house of people I love. Amen. I love that. It's perfect. Makes my home feel cozy. Makes my heart feel happy. And just looking at it brings me joy. All right. So we're going to start with this little frame wall decor that came from Dollar Tree. And then we have a variety of stickers here. They look, they look very springy to me. Very pretty. So these are going to be the ones we're going to use today. You can find these in the Crafter Square. Use any ones that you like. The idea is the same. Choose some scrapbook paper or some wallpaper or some adhesive paper, whatever you want to use for your background. This one is very cute. This one I think I got from Joanne on a clearance. I believe I did. All right, so here we go. Project number one. We're going to use this little frame here. It's very easy to take apart. Just fold up these four tabs. Take your backing right off. It's not glued down or anything. You can peel it off if you want or you can use the back. Whatever you want to do. Sometimes it comes off easy and sometimes it's a real booger to remove. can always use, I've seen other people use uh, Goo Gone and stuff like that, but I don't like the idea of getting the project wet and then putting any type of glue or tape on it. I don't feel like it would stick. So I'm just going to smooth it down a little bit with this heavier grit paper. I use a sanding block most of the time for my projects, but I needed a heavier grit to really smooth down the bulk of this paper. So the first sticker I'm going to use will be this yellow truck on the top. It is 3D, so there are two layers here. If you want to just pick the truck off, you could probably cut around it and cut the flower section off of it, but I really like the idea of having a little flower part right in the back of the truck. Or maybe the truck is parked right in front of the stand. Who knows, but I like it like this. So we're going to use the background also. For the paper, there are lots that would look great with this, but just go through and kind of get an idea of what you like and what you want. I think Dollar Tree has some of these little pads that are smaller, maybe in solids. Here we go. This is the one we're going to use. It is yellow and white.
You could use wrapping paper for this too if you wanted. Now I just wanted to show you that if you wanted to, you could use double stick tape here, but I'm not going to do that. I don't feel like it's gonna hold it enough for my sanding aggressively, like you know I do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the glue on here. No need to peel off the tape. We're just gonna put it right back down and it won't hurt a thing being there. Okay, just pressing that down firmly to make sure that we have good, good seal there. And then I'm going to use my wooden ruler to press it down. I decided to trim just a little bit. If you use a double stick tape instead of the glue stick, you would certainly need to cut this neatly close to the edge so that it have a nice finished look. I'm going to take my sanding block here and just start trimming away downward and outward from my backing. And it's just gonna shear that right off for you. And there you go. You can see before the, I pressed it down, you could see the little tape, but it's gonna be covered, so it's all right. Then decide where you want your sticker to go. Top, bottom, center, wherever you like it. Excuse my shaky camera. It's actually like a tripod arm that's attached to the table, so it wiggles. I'm sure you've seen it on here before. So going to the other pack, I like this, I think it says, uh, yes, Live Today. I like this one with a little yellow flower. I'm going to add that one on the bottom there. And don't worry about it looking top heavy because we're going to fix that. Pop that right back into your frame. Fold your tabs down. And because we didn't glue it, we'll be able to use this project again. So here we go. I love the little beaded top. It came that way, which makes it really, really nice and finished looking. Go ahead and take some coordinated ribbon. It does not have to be wired for the type of bow that we're gonna make. So go ahead and grab that Dollar Tree ribbon, save yourself some money. I love the lemons the first time I found it. So pretty. I think lemons are gonna be big this year. So hopefully I'll be coming up with some more crafts with lemons for you. Okay, this is so simple. Just crisscross these over in any pattern or shape that you would like. You can try to get them the same size. You can get them in different lengths. It doesn't matter. What, whatever makes you happy. Because you can fix it in the end. You can trim it up if you need. I'm going to take a little bit of this twine. This is just cotton twine from Dollar Tree. It's a huge spool. Get a lot of use out of it. Then I'm going to hold this in the center. Wrap it around with this cord and tie it off. You can certainly use <clears throat> burlap if you have it. You could use a thin ribbon if you if that's what you have or you can use um, pipe cleaner, you can use floral wire, whatever you have. Just something to bind those all together in the middle. So if there's some frayed ends just be sure that you trim that off. For me trimming a couple of pieces to make sure that they're all even is a necessary thing and then you can just kind of flare them out a little bit pull them around get them where you like them and decide where you want to put this I think it would look better on the bottom to kind of balance out the heaviness from the hanger and the truck on the top just a little bit of hot glue so we don't make a mess put the center right in the center bottom of the frame and that was so simple and look how pretty that is cute as can be and it is ready to go make a nice gift too i think it's definitely spring follow me on my social media pinterest and instagram all right on to project number two and i'm going to use the bicycle this time with the pansies Here is a little, I don't know what you call this. It came from Dollar Tree. It's a little triangle decor piece. And this is burlap that I got from the thrift store. Use any fabric that you would like for your backing. But I think this just looks great together. I love the chalkboard look with the burlap behind it. So you just press the backing out and then clean up your frame because you don't want to have a big mess there. You can peel this off. 
again sometimes it will be agreeable sometimes it will not just flip it around and use the other side if you need to or sand down what you have going on right now and this sticker behaved pretty well okay now nice and pretty cleaning up a little bit and putting down my fabric all right so I want to get an idea of how much fabric I'm going to need to wrap around the edges. So I'm just going to cut a square of it and then start trimming it down so that I have about an inch overhang on each of the sides of the triangle. All the way around. Okay, so because it's burlap and you can see through it, I'm going to use the brown side as the front so the burlap will just look brown. You don't see all that paper through it. Otherwise, you're gonna see the white and the blue. You don't want that. So protect your fingers because you know this goes right through the burlap. And just start folding over your edges. Adding glue, tucking, folding over where you need, and then you can always trim up anything left that kind of hangs out or gets in the way. Those little pieces will just come straight out of there. No big deal. Easy peasy. See, I'm cleaning that corner up. All right, now watch how I fold this corner. Fold it in and then over. Makes a nice, neat corner. And you can cut the bulk off there. And then continue around with this side till you get up to the top tip of the triangle. Trim it up just a tad, but don't cut it too short because you're going to need to fold over that tip to cover it without making a hole or making a mess up there. And then trim off those frayed pieces. And there you go. Perfect burlap triangle backing. So this is the bike that we're gonna use. And the largest part of this triangle is the bottom. So we are gonna put our bike down there. You can decide where you want it. Check your placement. This is how it would look. You don't wanna have your wheel stuck behind the, the trim there. So be sure that you get it centered. And then choose what sign that you want to use. You know me. I love the word joy and enjoy this you know sounds to me like you're in joy so I love that it's perfect it's perfect for carefree springtime DIYs you're going to need hot glue to hold these down the adhesive is not going to stick well to this burlap put your stickers on there where you like them look at it and decide do you need to add more can you stop here and I love these pansies. So I was trying to get an idea of what else I might want to add on here. But I think this is what, yes, this is what I'm gonna do to fill that bottom out. A little hot glue and put the bouquet of pansies right there at the front of the bike. All right. So I'm filling this black and white ribbon that I got from Big Lots on clearance from Christmas. And I decided that I want to make a little bow for the top. I want to add a little something else to it. Just a simple little shoestring bow. I'm going to fool with it until I get it exactly how I want it. I think that'll look pretty right on the top. But I'm going to trim it up first with the same ribbon, which is exactly, or very close to, the exact same diameter as the edges of this box. Be sure that you cut your ribbon at an angle, and if you do this, when you flip it over, you'll have the perfect angle to lay down for the next row. Okay, so see, here I'm cutting. Even with the bottom, flip the ribbon over, and then you have the perfect angle to go on top in that corner. Isn't that neat? I accidentally found that. I'm not a genius. That was really simply an accident. I thought it was going to get all complicated with the math and stuff, which I'm not good at, so it didn't. 
All right. Trim that off. Now it's time to put this down. And look what I did. Bump. I got out of line over there. But that's okay. I'm going to show you how to clean that up. So don't fret if you make a mess with your glue gun. Give it a second to start to dry. Then you can take any type of little wooden stick or a piece of wire that you have around and just pick it right off. So I'm just making sure that I got off all the little extras in there so it looks nice and neat. And rather than dovetailing this tiny ribbon, I've decided just to cut it at a slant. It'll be simple and perfect for this. There we go, right at the tip. How cute is that? You could stop here if you wanted, or you could get some florals. Blah, 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 blah. Florals. <laughs> yeah. These came from Dollar Tree, but the ones that I was cutting just before actually are from the thrift store. So decide what you want. Poke them in there. See if it's how you like it, because once you glue it in, it's there. Or you can make a mess and waste a little bit of time pulling it all back out, and I'm not about that. Our time is precious. Let's do things we love, not picking apart the things we don't, we don't really care about. All right, so I'm adding some yellow and I'm adding some little purple. I didn't have any pansies, but I thought that these little hydrangeas looked pretty good. And there you go, what do you think? So here's the second one that we did complete looking all kinds of spring lovely look at our nice edges isn't that great and here's the first one that we did these are so cute you can use one to hang and one to sit on a shelf somewhere all right we're gonna start off with some beads that came from dollar tree little pearl beads we're gonna take some this is my thrifted ribbon it's like a lace ribbon that I got from Goodwill, it curves, which makes it a lot easier. And then I'm gonna take some of this tissue paper that I got at the thrift store, and a piece of cardstock paper. I'm gonna start folding this over. The idea is to get the shape of a, it's called a Tussie Mussy. Um, it's like a Victorian bouquet, only they had it in like a, um, a metal holder we're going to use paper to do ours, but it's the same idea. So it's a shabby chic Victorian thing. So you're going to start off by making a cone with your paper. Then I'm just using some uh, scotch tape to hold this together. You're not going to see it. It's going to be underneath. So just whatever kind of tape you have will probably work there. Then I'm going to trim the edge of one side to make sure that my cone is even. I'm going to leave the back high. And then I'm going to start wrapping it with my tissue paper. I have no idea where this paper originally came from. It's, it's really pretty. It's got some Easter and Valentine's and just the entire springy love look, I think. So I'm going to roll until we get to the edge of our cone up there. I'm just using a pen to mark where to cut. I'm going to cut that off. I don't want to double up on the paper because I, I want to be able to see my pictures. If you double up, it's going to look kind of dark. So it stands out pretty nicely, the sheerness against this white paper. Then I'm just going to kind of tuck and fold and tape around the cone but you got to be very careful with this tissue because it will tear it um, you know tissue paper will tear use whatever kind you can find whatever kind you like you could use a solid color you can use polka dots or florals or um, anything that you like that you can find and you could probably use some type of wrapping paper if you wanted this is some double stick tape that I'm using to just gently hold these together while I'm working around this cone to make my shape. And I've, I've never done this before, so this is kind of a, 
a learning experience for me. So you probably see me wrapping and rewrapping a few times. But the end result is, I think, nice. And um, so just keep working with yours until you get it the way you want it to be. I'm just trying to try to curl that and then press that down on the inside of the cone. That's going to help hold the flowers once we get those in there. Now our cone is pretty much complete with paper and I'm going to use some of this glue stick to now finish the edges and make sure that there's no peeling on this cone. You could probably Mod Podge if that's something that interests you that you want to do, but I didn't feel like it was necessary for this project for me personally. I'm going to take a little bit of this tape and reinforce the tip of this cone so that it does not tell tear. So that's all I'm doing, just wrapping around there to make sure that it doesn't come off while I'm moving things around. Now we're going to make the collar for this or the trim and see how it curves so it's going to very nicely lay on here. You could probably curve a regular ribbon around there if you wanted to, kind of pleating it or bunching it up or ruching it. But this was this was great. And this feels like um like a cotton fabric. It's pretty old. It was in a bag with some more uh, some vintage sewing supplies when I found it, but this is the part that really interested me. I love these colors too, this peach and cream. It's really pretty together. So I'm just doubling this up and using a little bit of hot glue and protecting my fingers to make this little collar. I don't know the actual word for it. That's why I'm calling it a collar because it, it actually does look like a collar. Okay, and now it's gonna go all the way around this top edge and it's a little bit long, but that's okay because I'm going to trim that up in the end. So I will start in the back at the seam. This is the part that's not going to be seen. I'm going to start adding a little bit of glue and placing down my, my lace. I'm going to follow this all the way around. Careful not to tear your paper. I don't think I can stress enough how fragile tissue paper is. You really have to be gentle with it. So keep going. Are you a fan of Shabby Chic? Do you like the Victorian or vintage look? And I guess when I say vintage, I mean way vintage. late 1800s, early 1900s. It's a lot of charm, I think, in the, the pieces and in the decorations that go way back. Very romantic. Okay, so I'm gonna trim off what I have left here. Make sure everything lays nice and flat so when we put the hanger on we have no problems. Now I'm going to show you here how to make the florets or the roses that I'm going to use inside. I'm also going to use some flowers that came um, from Dollar Tree and that are thrifted. But these are going to be my focal point, these two flowers that I make. So I'm cutting 8 inch pieces of this curved lace. I'm going to cut some oval shapes out of some scrap paper and that's what I'm going to use as the base to set these florets or flowers on. I'm going to start off with a generous amount of glue there and then twist in a circular pattern and pleat it as I'm going. So you just fold a little bit over and tack it down. Fold a little bit over and then tack it down. Keep moving in a circular 
pattern all the way around and it's going to give you this little pretty cup shape which is like a flower. Now we're going to start with the center of the flower. Same thing, start in the center, place your edge down and then we're just going to continue to add a dot of glue, turn, gather a little section and then press it down. Protect your fingers because it's you're, you can't see really what you're doing here. It's more of a, you're kind of feeling toward the center of the flower when you do it. You know, keep turning. And you get the idea of this process. The intersection is going to be a little bit of a tighter shape. And it's going to be a thicker one because you're using the same length, but you're using a smaller amount of space, if that makes sense. So be sure that you place your, you go all the way around with that glue and make sure that your ends are placed down. Now you can use a button in the center, be very pretty, or you can use beads. And I've used these Dollar Tree beads on lots of projects and I am going to use those as the center for these flowers. Isn't that cute? So that's gonna be my larger flower. Now, if you want your flower to be tighter and smaller, this is what you would do. You're gonna do the same thing but you're going to make a lot more gathers and a lot more tacking with the glue all the way around. You see this one's a little tighter, like a flower that's not completely opened yet. Then do your inner layer, same as before. You getting the idea? And then we're going to give this one a center as well. So you see the two different sizes. I'm going to take this floral stem that I used the flowers from another project. And I'm going to use those as the stem for this project. Simple, simple. Put those where you want them. Then we're going to use a piece of that cardstock I had left, a little scrap paper, and put that over the top to hold it in place and make it look a little prettier. And there you have it. Give those a second to set up and then choose your flowers that you want to use. I'm going to use this, it's a, I don't know what it came off of, but it's a, a pick or a stem or a, a dowel of some sort. I'm going to use floor wire to lift up these roses so that they are higher up and they don't sink down into the bottom. So I'm wrapping it and then I'm going to take some of my tape, my floral tape. You know it's waxed. You give it a little bit of pressure and then it releases the stickiness and you just twist all the way around. That's going to cover up my wire so it doesn't tear any of my tissue and it gives it a prettier look. See, it fits right down in there without going through the tip, which we secured. Here are my handmade flowers, and then I'm going to add one more flower in the side. I think the cream and the peach are really pretty. We're going to make the backing now. I'm going to use this cotton twine. I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue on the end and twist it to give me a point so that I can feed it easily through these beads. You can count by looking in the little bowl to see how many beads that I used as we go along here. This piece could be hung on the wall, it could be hung on a doorknob, it could be hung um, on a door, you know, as a spring decor piece. You could give it as a gift. I think it would be beautiful for grandmothers or for Mother's Day to give something like this. Okay, so there is my my beads, and I'm just going to make a double knot because one knot will not um, will not hold it. The bead will slip back through. See, so you're going to double knot it. Put that knot right on top of the other knot. That's going to give you some uh, 
thickness so that the bead won't slide back off. So there you go, nice and secure. And we're gonna do the same thing with the other end. Now it is secure. You can, if you make it big enough, you can hang it from side to side, or you can put your carrier or your, um, your hanger rather in the back. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna kind of straddle it over the point of that cone put some glue down and then use another little scrap of paper to hold it in place. I'm going to put my little clamps here from the Crafter Square in Dollar Tree. Put those on there. They work great to hold things in place until they're nice and dry and secure. And I definitely don't want this breaking. Trim off your edges and then I'm going to add a couple of pieces of this fern as my greenery. There will be a longer piece in the back. And then this one, I'm going to trim up just a little bit, just for a little variation on the height, and I'm going to add it more toward the center. And so here you have it. You can go ahead and add buttons to your cone if you would like. You can add more lace. You can do whatever you like to... Um, to add to this if you like. I like right now that it is just simple. Um, I think it's just a really pretty piece and I've not done anything like this before but I would totally do more if there's interest so comment below and let me know do you like this? Do you like this type of decor? Um, would you like to see more? I'm going to start out with some ribbon. I've chosen mine from the Dollar Tree. One is bigger than the other. I have some burlap and these are in about six inch, five or six inch rolls. These are Dollar Tree picks of lavender. And there are two different colors. There's a dark purple and a lavender, a lighter purple. I also have these thrifted picks that came from another arrangement. I pulled them out of. And they're kind of, they look like lavender, but they're on a vine. And then I just have some leftover pieces of greenery. And a wire wreath that has the little pine wraps on it. This is a dome shape wreath and it's about 16 inches. So I'm gonna take this Dollar Tree picture, it's wall art. I think it's a really nice picture. And I'm gonna take it out of the plastic wrapping and I'm also going to remove the glass from the front. Put everything back in. The main purpose of removing the glass is so that there's no glare during the video, but you're welcome to leave yours on if you'd like. I'm gonna take this thrifted, I guess it's just a frame type wreath base, and I'm going to pull all of my pieces out to make it easier when I start wrapping. So I got this at Goodwill and it was kind of all mashed up. I'm gonna pull these pieces out. Now I'm gonna take 10 inch loops here of this burlap. I'm gonna bundle up the end, press it all the way down, and then wrap my little wire pieces here two times. I'm gonna measure again 10 inches, make a little poof, and then go to the next one. And we're starting on the outer ring two wraps and I'm going to do this all the way around bottom rim of that wreath. Measuring, bunching it up and then wrapping it two times. So here we're at the end of that bottom row. I'm gonna make that last poof on the bottom, twist it in, and then we're gonna jump up to the next level. So I'm just gonna go right up top there and place it in the center. Now this time, I'm gonna be measuring eight inches. We want it to be a little bit smaller because we don't want this to be a wreath that extends too far out on the front or if you put it on your door and you have a glass door or a storm door, 
or even a screen door, it'll push your wreath down. So you want to keep this kind of at a, a low profile. So we got to make this a little bit smaller. These loops are eight inches. Going to go around and do the same thing as we did on the bottom row. Eight inches, a little puff, and then two twists. When you get to the end up there, you're just going to put it right back into that same spot, twist it, and then trim it off. And then the little leftover piece is just pretty much going to be hidden in the wreath, but you can tuck it down if you would like to do that. Now I'm going to take the lighter burlap that I had, and I'm going to start that on the bottom. I'm going to do about eight inches, and I'm just going to zigzag it from the bottom row, every other one to the top row. So I'm going to go to the top here. I'm going to unwrap it. My burlap's going to stay there, and then I'm going to wrap this one in there. So then I'm going to go down, measure eight inches, and wrap it in the bottom. Two wraps. Then I'm going to go, I'm going to skip one, go up to the top, open that one up, and put this lighter colored burlap in the top here. I'm going to do this all the way around the wreath. And then once you're done and you trim it off, just go ahead and fluff it out. Pull your sections apart and fluff it. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just pulling stuff and tucking stuff. Now we're going to look at a choice of colored ribbon here. Whoops! Pop the back right off of that. These are wired, the two smaller ones here. And I'm going to do pretty much the same thing with this this wired ribbon. I'm just going to put it in here and then I'm going to jump it back and forth around the wreath all the way back to the top. I wanted it to be a little bit more full. And the idea is, since this is pretty much used for Christmas, this type of a pine wreath, I want to be able to cover up as much of that evergreen as possible for the look of this wreath. And you can do that by bulking it up with ribbon and extra whatever that you're using. Ribbons, an extra roll of burlap, another, uh, maybe a colored roll of burlap if you had something that you wanted to use. But I wanted to keep mine fairly neutral as a base here. So you're going to go all the way around till you get to the end. And for me, I was just shy of making probably two more crosses with that, with the polka dot ribbon. But I'm okay with that. As you can see here, this is what it looks like. And I'm okay with that uh, because I have something I'm going to put on top. So we're just going to make that empty space the top of the wreath. And you won't be able to tell. So I narrowed it down to which ribbons I wanted to use. And I'm having trouble with my pin there. A huge thank you to my neighbor who gave me a bunch of crafting supplies that she was no longer using. And so I have lots of pretty ribbons to use now. I like the look of this, and I'm going to add a thicker piece in there too. This is the bottom burlap piece with the lace, also came from Dollar Tree. And you can also get, you know, colored ribbons and stuff like that at Dollar Tree too in the garden section, or something seasonal if you want to get something seasonal would be with particular holiday section of the store. I'm going to do four strips of each one of these. If you want to make more of these little bundles, then you can certainly make more of them, but I'm just going to make sort of like a messy bow. Essentially, they're going to be little ends that are just tucked in randomly through the wreath. So I'm just going to stack them, bunch them in the middle. These are six inch pieces, by the way, of each one of these. And then I'm going to take this little purple cording and just tie them in the middle. We'll do that to each one. I like to alternate my wired ribbon with the ribbon that is not wired because when you do it that way, you give some lift and some body to the little bundle. And that's what you want. You want something that's going to kind of hold up your, your area there and give it some dimension away from the body of the wreath. 
So I'm dovetailing all my ends. And this is what each little bundle is going to look like. You can kind of lay them out and see where you want to put them when you're done. Get an idea of what type of placement you like. Okay, so then we're going to put something to hold this onto our wreath. Hot glue is not going to be an option for me because I intend to reuse this. So we're going to give it a wire backing and we're just going to attach it to the wreath with these little pipe cleaners. I just went through the original hanger on the top to do that, get a little more support. And then on the bottom, I just added a little scrap of ribbon. You won't be able to see the back because it's going to be down into the wreath. So the top section that doesn't have that extra ribbon is where I'm going to put the top of that um, wall decor artwork and then fasten it down underneath to the frame of the wreath. And see here, it's down on the frame. Flip it back over, do a little fluffing, a little arranging, and then you can take all of the evergreen that is left in the that is kind of sticking out that you'd used before and tuck it down into the wreath. Now I'm going to take these picks and kind of decide where I want them to go. I took a bundle, cut those picks, those picks apart. I lost my footage. I'm not sure what happened, but I cut those picks apart. I randomly stacked them on both sides and then wrapped them in the center with a little piece of that eucalyptus pick and that's going to be what we're going to put on the bottom and so all of these little vine pieces are what I want to put around the sides nothing is glued down at this point it's just where I've kind of done a dry run here and when you're preparing to put these down you can use them to help hold your anything that is flying away, your little flyaways. You can hold those down with the glue and the ribbon. So that's what I've done. I've just kind of tucked them like they're growing around randomly through the wreath. And I'm using my bow to help keep them from falling too far away from the body of the wreath. So I've just put some hot glue down, placed a piece underneath, and then glued it on top. If you made more of these little bundles, you could go around the outside, like toward the bottom, if you wanted to. This is just, this video is for inspiration for you. You can decide, see there, how we're putting that, how we're gonna put it. You can decide, you know, what works best for you. And I have to give it a minute, because it's a lot of, area there it needs to glue to so I'm showing you how long it takes pretty much how long you want to hold it down if you feel that it's lifting then put a clip on it and let it stay there and I'm gonna do that here put some glue on the back if you didn't want to use glue at all you could use pipe cleaner around the center and then attach all of this with a pipe cleaner instead once the glue is set up you can remove your picks and then I'm going to show you how to make some simple little clips. We're going to make, it's going to look like a hairpin or a bobby pin with just a piece of floral wire. Poke it through that burlap. It's very easy to do. Pull it to the back and then twist it around. That's going to hold it nicely and you really won't even notice it through the burlap. Green is the same color as the stem so you don't really see it. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Just take a little, a little scrap, a random piece. Press it through there and then twist it on the back side. And then it's going to hold it there for you. If you open the weave up a little bit when you're doing this, you know, just use your fingers and, and pull it back and you won't even notice it. Our lab's very forgiving that way. So these have a little bit of wire in them. I'm just kind of working with that. Now we have to put something on the top. And I don't, I, de I definitely do not want that on the top. I've decided that I'm going to put it on the bottom. So I'm just using a piece of the wire that came from that pick. 
to hold it down there. Now, if you want to, you can wrap the center of this with twine. You can wrap it with burlap. You can put a bow on top, whatever you want to do on the bottom. But I like the raw look of it looking like I just picked it out of the garden. And I'm waiting for it to dry. So I'm just going to take another piece of this ribbon. This is a really simple bow. Pinch it in the middle. And then I want to add a couple of layers on top of this. Same thing. We're going to use the, the dark purple. This is showing up as a blue color, but this is really a deep purple. I don't know why my camera does that. but And then the lightest color is going to go on the top. We got all those with identical bows, a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to wrap it around with the pipe cleaner. And fluff it out. I love the shabby sheath look of that ribbon that's on the bottom from Dollar Tree. It's a really pretty ribbon. It's pretty standard. They've had it for a few years, so you shouldn't maybe have too much trouble finding that ribbon. Okay, so after you've all got it all fluffed out, you can either dovetail the ends or you can just cut them in a slant like I'm doing here. This is really simple. Generally, you will see me dovetail, but I thought maybe this would be okay for this. And I don't want it to be too long of a bow. I don't want the tails to be too long because I don't want to obscure my picture that's down there because it's, it's the whole point of this wreath is that gorgeous picture. So I'm just going to do all of these that way and a little hot glue on the top to press it right down on that frame. Now to add a little more to the top of the wreath, since we it's kind of bottom heavy right now, even with that bow on the top, I want to add a little bit of green here. So I've just cut some pieces off of the picks that I had left and glued them in the top. And this is our result. Thanks for watching. So somehow or another, my footage got kind of messed around here, but bear with me. We're going to take this foam board and cut it to fit this five by seven frame. This is a little bit of a shadow box frame back was broke on it. I got it from Goodwill, but I knew that the finish on it would be perfect for spring or summer usage. So I'm just going to measure that on the foam board and you see me lining up my ruler here. And then you can use your scissors um, or you can use a knife, whatever you want to use to cut this down so that it will fit very snugly in the back because we don't want it to press all the way through. Okay, so there's the frame I was telling you about. I love this frame. I have no idea where it originally came from, but for me it came from Goodwill, as well as that cream colored burlap, this flower pick, this pick, this ribbon. In fact, the only thing that I use that didn't come from Goodwill would be the foam backing and this little sign that I got on clearance at Hobby Lobby last year. So I'm going to cover my piece of foam in this burlap. I'm going to trim it off so I have about an inch extra for the for the uh, the thickness of this foam board. I need to be able to fold this over so and glue it down. Be sure if there's a part that you're using that has the tag on it that the tag is on the back side and not against the burlap because you will see that through the burlap. So I'm just going to pull a little bit over and press it down into that glue. You can use clamps or clips, whatever you have. I like to use my Crafter Square little pink and metal clamps there. They work good for these thinner surfaces. And they don't clamp down so hard that they make an indention. So that's really convenient when you're doing a crafting project. Just going to roll that over and press it down. Protect your fingers. Sometimes I have my fingers that, did you see that? That's craziness. I had the protector on my pointer finger on the left hand and I'm using my other fingers to press it down. Not my smartest move. Okay, so I'm just trimming off that line because it would drive me crazy not to. And I'm going to kind of turn that corner in and then press it up. That way there's no bulk hanging out on the side. Just kind of turn the corner in, press it down. You 
can trim off any of these little little fibers that are bound to come out with burlap it's just the nature of it lots of strings so it is stringy okay folding that one in too pressing it down and then holding it you don't have to use the clamps um, if it looks like it's gonna stay for you that's fine but the fabric is, is a little on the thicker side so I've found in my experience that it needs a little more help to stay where it needs to until the glue has a chance to grab it now you see this this is not dirty this is part of the burlap it's just a darker fiber that's in there and I'm trying to scratch it out I'm trying to get it out I did not pay attention when I cut it so yeah, but that's okay, because we're going to cover it up. So I'm going to take my hot glue, put a good amount on the back of this plaque, and then place it down. I bought three of these last year. I think they were 70, 80, or 90% off, but I knew I'd want to use them again. And it just so happens that the details on the bunny match the colors in the frame perfectly. So, you can see here that this sits on the top of the outside. I don't want to have it completely down in there so that it is pressed against the front of the frame. So, I'm just going to support the back with some strips of, uh, I think this was poster paper. Yeah, some scraps of poster paper that I had and some hot glue just to hold it where it is. Keep it from slipping all the way down. Don't worry about how it looks right now because that will be covered. Here's some felt sheet, some felt backing sheets that I have that a neighbor gave me. She was clearing out her crafting supplies, so she gave me quite a bit of stuff. And I am just going to cut that down because that's going to cover up the back and give us a little more of a finished look. This is a pretty thick felt too. This is um, almost as thick as the foam board, so it's really nice. Before we do that, I'm going to sandwich in my little hanger. And this is what I do with the piece of jute. Just make a simple little tie in there. And then I'm gonna slip it through the original hanger that's on the back. And this should give it all the strength that it needs to stay. I'm gonna go in with some glue here and just really get kind of thick with the application. And then press this down on the back. Grab some clamps to hold it down. And then once it is set up, you can remove your clamps. And this is what we have so far. Now, because the hanger originally had a wire in the top, there are holes there. These are not holes that I was interested in spackling or um, using wood filler or anything because I knew that I would be able to trim it out and give it more of a shabby chic look if I added a little bit of that antique decorative ribbon. You can get decorative ribbon at any craft store. But there's something about these old ribbons that I just, I love. I'm going to trim that off a little bit, just using uh, manicure scissors. I don't have detailing scissors, but these work perfectly for me. And now we're going to work on a pretty little bow to go on the top. This is a little bit out of focus, but it's actually a, like a peach peachy color it's really a nice little ribbon and it's pretty thick with the two layers with the ribbon in the back and then the lace on the top it's pretty thick so it kind of holds its own there now all I'm doing is making six loops on each side to make the bow part the top part of the bow I'm going to use a little piece of jute scrap here little tip if you save those little pieces of burlap that come out when you're doing your projects, those little strips that always come out, you can use those again for things like this, just little scraps to tie things off if you have a good strong piece of burlap. Sometimes they'll break if you, you know, you bear down on them too hard. So just be sure that you've got a good piece. Test it out before you tie it. Just kind of pull on it and see if it's going to work for you. Put two or three knots in there because we're going to be pulling on this bow and you want to be sure that that knot does not come out or you'll have to start all over
I made this a small bow and just a simple bow because I like the simplicity and I want the main focus really to be on that gorgeous little bunny in the in the center. I'm going to cover up the center with just a little piece of that same ribbon. Don't leave your little tails poking out. You want to get that nice and clean looking. Protect your fingers. It is a pretty thick ribbon though, so you will see me use my the wrong unprotected fingers on here. It's almost like putting on those finger protectors, it's like putting a band-aid on, so then you kind of, you favor that finger and you don't want to use it because you feel like you got a bobo on it. Well, that's kind of what I think my left hand is thinking. Okay, it has a mind of its own. So now we need some tails for that pretty ribbon, for the pretty bow, and I'm just going to cut four little strips and cut them at a slant rather than cutting them dovetails or flat or whatever just because I thought I wanted to try something different so this is the pattern that I like and we're going to try this and just see and you just give me your opinion what do you think do you think that once this bow is together that this is a good look or no should they have a should the tails have a little more freedom or what do you think I'm always trying to do something a little bit different. I don't want everything that I make to look exactly the same. And I want to challenge you to be creative and try your own things. What do you think? Remember, there's really no right or wrong to crafting. It's, it's your own creativity. It's what you love, what brings you joy. I say it all the time, joy, joy, joy. It's all about that. It's about happiness and doing what makes you happy. So this is what we have so far. And I think it looks good. Now I'm just tripping down some of the remnants here from that little bouquet of roses that I had. It had been used by another crafter apparently and lots of little buds and flowers were missing from it. So I just picked it apart and I'm just using, you know, what there is left. Picking the parts that will actually fit and not obscure the view from the little bunny because I don't want that to happen. I don't, I don't want the flowers to become, you know, the attention grabber here. I'm going to take some of the little rosebuds and place them around. I always want to leave in sort of my thought process instead of giving you a completely edited start to finish quickly hammer it out kind of video because I want you to see how I'm thinking, what I'm thinking about when I'm crafting, what brings me inspiration and, and what looks good to me and how you can move things around before you glue it. You know, move it around, see where you might like it first, what it looks like to you, and then, you know, for me, I want to give you inspiration and you decide what looks best for you. And then you take that idea and do your own thing. You know, that's my channel is making it my own because I want you to make things your own not cookie cutter of what somebody else does, you know? So when you have a foliage pick, be sure that you realize that they're plastic pieces or fabric pieces, and you can trim those down. If you need something to lay flat, just trim off one side that's gonna be against the flat surface, kinda like I did on the bottom there, and just press it in and see it fits nicely now. And you'll never know because you can't see the back of it. I'm gonna add a little greenery to this side too. And then again, I'm thinking, where do I want to put this other piece? And I'm going to add it, just that piece, right to the top of that bow. So what do you think? I love it. I think it turned out really, really nice. I think it's a very high-end look. And that you would definitely pay a lot of money for an item like this. It's dimensional and it's the perfect colors for spring. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye!